Hello, Camp Pros, and welcome to the Camp Parker Podcast. My name is Travis Allison. I am a summer camp marketing and strategy consultant, and I help camps translate what they do so that more families insist on sending their kids to summer camp. And my name is Gabrielle Grail, and I'm one of the camp directors at Camp Waro. Camp Waro is an all-girls camp situated in the Laurentian Mountains in Quebec, Canada, and we focus on providing a positive female community, and we do that in English and in French. That's awesome. My name is Joe Richards. I'm the executive director at Pierce Williams, uh, which is a summer camp and retreat facility located in southwestern Ontario. Um, I also play guitar here at Chapel. That is all I do. We are located, just for your reference, halfway <laughs> between Detroit and Toronto. Awesome. Well, welcome back to the two of you and welcome to our watchers and listeners to episode 114. We're recording this on the 19th of September, but it will be coming out um, sometime in October. Um, so we've picked a topic that is timely for when this will be released, but I think timely for all professional camp pros. Uh, we want to talk today about the idea of what is a continuing education for an experienced camp pro look like? We have talked many times about what you do when you're new to the profession and things you should look for and um, places you should go for your own professional development. But we want to really focus this morning on um, continuing education for experienced camp pros. Before we dive into it today, I want to just take one minute and say how much we are grateful to those people who've left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher app or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Even though that can be scattered all over the place, each one of those matters. It helps us get in front of more camp pros. It helps us spread the ideas of ongoing professional development of this community that is so open and sharing and, um, you know, and get into the, the mind of great people like Gab and Joe and Dan when he's here and all the other guests that we have on, on there. So if you would take just a minute, if you're on iTunes, go to camphacker.tv slash iTunes. That'll open a direct link on your computer to do it, or you can do it on the app on your phone. It's probably the easiest way these days. Um, so thank you for thinking of that. So this morning, we talk about continuing education. And Joe, this is your proposal. Um, I wonder what will your thought process, why you thought this was worth talking about? I thought it's worth talking about because oftentimes when I speak to camp pros who are younger, they feel like everything they do has to be camp related. So they have to go to a camp conference. They, they, they look at everything through that lens. I would say that um, 15 years ago when I started here, going to camping conferences changed their perspective because you're in a new place. And so there's a huge value to that. But 15 years in, it becomes... Uh, what I deem a, a valuable educational experience is completely different. And so I branched out to the point where you're going places where camp is not the lead. So be it a fundraising conference or be it a, um, an Enneagram conference, be it, a, a, be it some other leadership or, or conference or just a retreat for yourself. So I think that that's, that's why I chose this topic, Travis, to talk about the value of getting outside of mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. and outside of just the, the regular camping things. Does that make sense? Right. It totally does. It totally does. Yeah. And just by way of continuing this introduction, um, I want to also say that, uh, I mean, Joe has a very good point about um, getting outside of the camp world that you're in. But I think that there is a surprising number of experienced camp pros who, who may go to conferences and things, but have never been outside of their own camp, have never been to see other mm -hmm. camps. And so that's the kind of thing that I'd, I'd really love to encourage. And I want to talk more about today is, is getting outside of your own camp world, let alone the world of camp that, that Joe's talking about. Gab, you're really great at, um, at getting outside of the camp world for your professional development. It's had huge impacts on Waro. Um, where, did that, where did that come from, that idea or that philosophy that you really wanted to do that? Um, I came from, I think my parents were very, very, my, I worked with my parents and my parents are very supportive, just education. Um, is important, but not necessarily formal education. So my father, um, just because of his childhood and upbringing, never had the opportunity to go to high school. So he's such, he, education learning is so, so important to him. And, and 
he just tries to get as much information as possible any way that he can. And so his energy towards knowledge is, is very inspiring. And then my mother, um, if you're excited about something, she'll do anything she can to get you to that. So, uh, so if, if I started looking into something that I, I was fascinated about, um, they, they both would, would try to create space so that I could go and explore it. And the other thing that I learned when, I think when you're a young camp professional, all you want to consume is camp material because you're, you're desperate to know how to do uh, your job well and there's so much to learn. Um, but I was told at a camp conference that um, to not just look at what camp professionals are doing, but look at what other industries are doing and, and see why they're the best at what they do. And I was reminded um, at a camp conference, and I think I was about 20 years old, um, that, that we can learn from our peers best practices but if we want to move our industry forward, we have to be taking cues from, from other industries and see how they do that. And that was such, I, I never, ever, ever thought about that. And I was always trying to hit those sort of top camps that I admired so much. And once another camp professional sort of opened, uh, opened that door for me, I realized uh, I could learn from anywhere. And, and that got me into into going to other types of conferences and just going for the sake of learning. And I think also at camp conferences, especially if you go for a while, it's, they're wonderful experiences. And I, I think they're a very important part of, of our learning and contributing. But if you've been going for a while, you end up, there's always pressure on you to maybe meet with other people or, or be a speaker or have meetings. And when you go to other conferences where you're not known, when yes, you get yes, to yes. have that experience of there's no pressure except for you to just learn and observe, uh, absorb, observe, and also know what it feels like to be the new person in the room, the new person in the space. And that's what our campers feel like. That's what our new staff members feel like. Um, and the joys of just learning, just being there and present and, and absorbing the information. And it will, of course, impact the way you do things. Um, and it'll also make you feel good about what you do because you'll realize we're ahead of other industries. We're, we, we're really doing some great stuff in the camp industry and, and uh, they can learn from us. And I learned that as well from, from going to other conferences. I love that point, Gab. I, one of the points you made just at the end there, I love the idea of going into a conference with fresh eyes because it allows you the perspective, as you say, as, an, as a new staff member run, coming into a new environment, you may be going to some big famous conference that people, you know, you've been following on Instagram for years or you've been following some of the speakers. And um, so you're sort of walking into an environment where other people are comfortable and know it and you're the new person. It's a good perspective for us to take as being the new person, but also really great for us to be observant. And I think that one of the best skills that you can develop as a camp pro, one of those things that leads to longevity is the ability to look at things and say, how would this apply to camp? So here I am a new person, um, you know, it's just a massive couple hundred people waiting to get their badges to get into a conference and it doesn't feel warm, it doesn't feel welcoming. How can we be um, better at that at our camp or in our camp conferences, you know, in our, at, at this point in a career where people are experienced, as you say, you often get asked to be on committees, you get often get asked to run conferences and we can take this experience from outside the industry and apply it. So that's a great perspective, thank you. I, the other thing I think that, um, that comes out of this is learning from, I think this is a sustainability thing as well, is learning from other industries allows you to lead. And um, I think that my passion for um, it's sort of a new perspective on camp marketing in the last 10 years has come out of following what's been going on in the business world and applying it to camp. That's entirely how my job came about is that when I was a camp director, I was really passionate about learning about how other industries were marketing, communicating their value, telling their stories, et cetera. And then when I quit being a camp director full time, I just had enough camp directors come to me and say, you know, how do we do this thing that's going on in the rest of the world? And, and having had that perspective, I was able to create this, this job and, and do this kind of thing. So th thank you both. Um, I wonder if um, there are specific things you look for, like what is the frame that you're trying to break? What, what are you searching for that's outside of the camp world that appeals to you the most, Joe? I think that has to do with your own, so outside of the camp world, it has to do with how your role changes. 
most roles change. The longer you are someplace, you're taking on new responsibilities or doing new things. Uh, one of the things here at Pierce Williams is we, um, my role has shifted more to fundraising and I'm still not there. Um, but um, I remember, and it came up in my Google Photos memories just days ago that I was in New York City five years ago um, for a fundraising seminar. Um, and, and then last year I attended the nonprofit storytelling conference. So those are both, what I'm looking for is what applies at the moment and what helps. Um, the, the reality is you're looking for things that expand your interest base. My favorite quote is um, by Roger Stockman. It's the larger the island of knowledge, the longer the shoreline of wonder. So the more I know, the more I want to know. And there are times when I give a keynote or a session and I talk about this idea of um, two magazines arriving in the mail. It used to be when, when we actually got physical magazines, which you still can get. Um, but I, I, know again. That, I know that um, Discover Magazine would arrive in my mailbox the same day as Rolling Stone. And so, which are two totally different things. And neither of them camp, right? But the reality is, um, the, the farther you read outside of your own industry, the more that your mind can take those ideas and bring them back together and, and move you forward. And so what I'm, what I'm always looking for is the opportunity to connect with people, but also to be that new person in the room. And in fact, to feel sometimes like I'm in the wrong room for a little bit. And that's the way I felt in New York city when I went Yes, is I was sitting awesome. in the room and, and and they were going around and it's small, like 20 people. Uh, you pay a lot of money to be in a room with 20 people who, with the lady and the gentleman who was teaching us. And you're like the Charity Water is there. The X Prize Foundation is there. They're getting training on these things. The Berkeley School of Music is there, right? And you're like, I'm either in the wrong place or I'm in the right place. Um, okay. And and it was, um, and, and I think that that willingness to feel uncomfortable and be, um, and be outside of ourselves allows us to be in places where you're going to meet people that you wouldn't normally meet at a camping conference um, or that camping conferences aren't going to have for a number of years, right? Because as, as great as camping conferences are, um, we don't tend to get the the spur of the moment the, like the 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 critical thing that's happening at that moment speaker we tend to be a bit behind that curve and and um i love how there's people walking through my video it's awesome um <laughs> there's a, a school back <laughs> camp today so um i think that you know i'm looking for self-development not just camp development because if we make ourselves better we're going to make our camp better and I think that's where a lot of people fall down is that they feel like it has to be focused on what can I do to make camp better? But if you're a better person, if you're a healthier person, if you have a more stable mindset and, and your mental health is strong, you're going to do better for camp. And so um, sometimes it's, I, for years, I, and I've talked about it here, I sat on the Buckeye Leadership Workshop and that's really where the three of us meet was at the Ontario Camp Leadership Workshop many we met years ago when I have staff choosing sessions they want to go to, they're often like, well, I have to choose a session that's going to help camp. And I was, and I'm like, no, like choose a session that helps you because if you get helped, then you'll help camp. Right. Like it's a, and so that's the way I feel when I, when I pick those sessions and, and look for things, Travis is to try and find something that is not, it can be solely for camp, but it, it is also looking for the new, looking for something that isn't here yet, right? We're not gonna discover our inspirational moments if we only do what we know we can do and only go where we know people. Yep. I think it's, I mean, I'm gonna come back to this over and over again. It's just the sustainability of your position depends on um, certainly your own um, taking charge of, of your own self-care and having the energy of some new knowledge from an outside area, all of that leads to you know picking something that gives you energy um, as professional development 
is, as, as Georgia said, I think that's just as important as something that really applies to camp. And I think my own personal example, I mean, it, I don't know, avid, rabid podcast listener. Um, I, I subscribe to almost 100 podcasts. Um, I have a whole system dialed in as to when I listen to them, what the priorities are, and, and I could do a whole show on, on podcast setups. But um, but something I've discovered over time is that mix of my podcast shifts all the time. Um, it does for lots of people that have listened. I've been listening to podcasts now for 15 years. Uh, the thing that I've noticed in my own stuff is my podcasts where I learn and I get my best professional development are no longer so business focused. They used to be really focused on stuff that would help our business or that I could translate to camp and, you know, could help camps, et cetera. But it was too stressful. Like it didn't give me the break. I wanted the little space to learn and, in things. It was like, I can't listen to this. I had two podcasts that were so practical and helpful that I had to take them off my phone because I couldn't do anything else. I had to, felt like I had to be sitting at my desk or taking notes. I couldn't drive with them. I couldn't walk with them, et cetera. And in the end, I still think I'm missing out on some good stuff there that would be very practical, helpful, et cetera. Um, and, but it, it wrecks the balance. It doesn't help me feel better about the way things are going. Gab, do you have some uh, ideas or um, advice? I think we're going to start to move towards, you know, things that we would suggest people do, but other advice for people looking for sustainability in a camp career and, you know, searching for professional development to build that? I think sustainability is a very key word because um, um, you, can, you can really drive yourself um, into a, an early burnout if, an early burnout as if we are all headed there into a burnout um if if you're not taking time to um, feed yourself and and instead of always uh, putting the energy out towards your camp um you need to, we need to feed ourselves and i think it's it's follow your passion whatever that may be so whatever you're interested and excited about don't worry about if don't worry about what's the point of this what's the point of of this experience just try you're, you're going to learn something and then i like to I'd like to go to, I always refer to like the, the bread industry conference. Like what does the bread industry conference look like? And, and I bet it's very similar also to the camp industry. You know, uh, there, there, there's probably big seminars on like gluten-free and the gluten-free movement and what's happening and where's this coming from. And there's going to be some people that are going to be on one side on how do we fight it and other people that are going to be, you know, we should be embracing it and creating our own grain that's gluten less and et cetera, et cetera. And how do we market it? And how do we make it a nutrition? Like there's just probably all this, you will learn something. My point is you'll learn something no matter where you go and what you listen to. If it's something that you're interested in, you're going to be absorbing something. Um, I think for, I think that sometimes going to maybe other conferences isn't something that is feasible for all people financially or time-wise. Though if it is a time issue, I would uh, strongly um, suggest that you look and see how you can carve out time if you can't find a week somewhere within your schedule because you feel you're too busy. Maybe we need to reprioritize how some of your workflow is going, but you can host. So um, Joe was talking that about that we, we, used, we met all at a conference called the OCLW or a workshop and that shifted into a gathering um, that Joe still runs today and I run um, with the Quebec Camp Association called Think Tank. And Think Tank is, uh, Think Camp, and Think Camp is, is basically uh, people coming, to, coming together and sharing their ideas through presentations. Um, the way I've shifted it is you don't have to come prepared with a presentation, you come prepared with a question. One question that you have that you'd like the group to answer. And if you're in a group of five, everybody could bring one question and, you know, and you make a time limit of, of talking about that one question. And so that maybe everybody's question can be answered. But if you're a larger group, you can, you can dot vote on the different questions and see which ones uh, maybe the team, it would be um, excited to hear about. But Think Camp has been a really wonderful way of bringing camp professionals together, having an evening and um, really pulling from expertise from other people. And just hearing how other people do things can really um, help inform you in some of the issues that you're having and also maybe also not feel so alone because the chances are people around that table, everybody has experienced your question one way or another. So 
um, if you can't go out and you can't uh, go to another conference, but you're still interested in in some of your your questions and building connections, which is a, a very important piece, is perhaps doing some sort of uh, think camp situation or even uh, doing it over Zoom with a bunch of friends, uh, people that you met at conferences that, that you'd like to get together. And we're really lucky as the camp um, hacker team because um, whether you know we're busy or not, we commit to a time where we're going to have a conversation. And I've learned so much from Camp Hacker as well as, of course, from Camp Code. But I feel like my my understanding of my job goes up simply because I sit down with these individuals and hear what they have to say on on a specific topic. And that you just can't put a price tag on that. Yep, you're right. So, Joe, I, I, I know you got your thinking face on, um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to jump in there. What I want to do is, is this, are you talking about suggestions, Joe? Is that what you're, do you want to follow well, up? I, I, can, I can talk about suggestions, yeah. No, no, I just wonder what you're, <laughs> if you had something to follow up, Gab, which I do, or you want to move on to some more suggestions. Yeah, to, to follow up with Gab, like we, um, we as Camp Hacker, the podcast, know that we haven't been the most consistent thing going out. Um, and that's one of the reasons we fired a podcast director. Um, and I think that is that is the exciting part, as Gab says, is that we'll actually get to have these conversations with three, with, you know, three other friends at least once every two weeks this year. Um, and the notes you take, right, the notes and things, even the simple thing that, oh, yeah, Think Camp can be scary to people. Maybe it is just a question we ask for. That's simple. Yeah, I can adjust that. That's great. Small things. And it also causes us to think Right, um, and, and I think that that's a huge benefit that we get as camping professionals that not everybody has a chance to. Yeah, you're totally right. So I, in thinking about suggestions, I thought I would frame it this way. Let's start with the least expensive and move to the more expensive. Um, Love it. So- can, uh, I, can I talk about expense just for a second? Sure, yeah. We need to understand that in the camping industry, what we pay to go to a conference is ridiculously small compared with what they actually cost, right? Like with what a training costs to, um, right now I'm a, I, I uh, subscribe to the Institute for the Futures newsletter. I'm not sure if anybody else does. And I'm like, oh, this would be a great training. Uh, but the training 6,500 bucks or like with the strengths training with Gallup um, and strengths finder and whatnot, that training is $15,000 US, right? But to go to a seminar and pay $2,500 for a two day seminar is not unheard of in this world at all. But we as camping people see our budgets and, um, and, and get really afraid of those things. That being said, there are very inexpensive ways to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to pick up on my cap side. I think the idea of, you know, free 40 minute Zoom calls with whoever I've heard about. Um, I just heard about another cool mastermind group um, of women camp directors that actually came out of WIC Gap that was formed at WIC and that they meet regularly and they brought in some people who weren't at the women in camp conference, but they meet regularly, just have Zoom calls and just exchange. So that's good professional development. You're getting people who are the same level of experience as you, um, may have totally different problems, have solved your problems years ago, but you have that exchange and you have that accountability of doing it. That is in, like, it is the most effective professional development you can do because it's not passive. You're not just sitting absorbing. You're being challenged to do new things. You're being challenged to try new things. You're being challenged to put yourself out there and say, I'm terrified to say this, but I have this problem with this little thing and I don't know how to handle it. Um, and then have people, um, you know, in exchange with you on that idea. And so that group that you can build trust with, that is um, free. Obviously, there's some there's some time expenses to that, but finding that group of people is can be a lifesaver. I have three mastermind groups that I belong to, and um, I, one of which is meeting this afternoon, and the other one, another one met yesterday. And there are such moments of joy in my month when I get to spend time with those people and say, "This is really hard," or "Hey, can you celebrate with me this really cool thing that that happened?" The, the, they're great. And so I would encourage you to, f to find a group of people, go to camp pros, go on campmavericks.com, et cetera. And, and, and campmavericks.com is actually another, I think, very inexpensive um, way of doing it. So 
that is our platform right now. It's only $9 us per month is going to be $49 us per month by the end of this calendar year. So go to campmavericks.com now and sign up for it. Um, I didn't intend this as an ad, but we are doing things in there like a podcast club and a book club where people meet regularly to talk about an, an episode of a podcast that, you know, will have impact on your camp professional development and same with books. And so we're really excited about that. And it's also a nice group of people who, you know, are committed to the idea of professional development that you can arrange stuff like your own Zoom meetings and your own, um, we call them circles in, in campmavericks.com, which are private or semi-private groups of people organizing around their own interests. So that is um, inexpensive, free, then inexpensive, um, soon to be more expensive, but even at $50 a year, I think it's an inexpensive um, investment in a nice close community. It's a little easier to find information than it is in summer camp professionals. The other thing I would say that is free and has amazing resources is um, a website called creativelive.com. They began as a photography and design training school, but they have moved into much bigger things, business development, um, adventure and outdoor um, skills, tons and tons of stuff. Um, their model is so cool because you can sign up for a course with them for free. And when it's being recorded, it's put out live for free. And then you pay for the recordings if you want. But if you're on a budget and need some professional development, and as you're doing, as we've suggested, and you're pushing yourselves outside of the, I can only learn from camp people mode, then Creative Live has some awesome, awesome courses. That's great. I think that your, your Zoom meeting idea, Travis, just getting together with a bunch of people, using Skype or using Zoom, whatever you have available to you is huge talking to people so that you're not alone because a lot of us as a lot of people as not a lot of us not me but a lot of people as camp people are um, either on their own on a daily basis sitting in an office or sitting at home working from their their place uh, wherever they live and working from a laptop just to connect with people is is important the time you put into it is what you will get back meaning that you you can look at it as I don't have an hour to do this or an hour and a half to do this. Well, but do you, if you don't do it, are you going to suffer? And, and the answer oftentimes is, is yes, we've been doing that for the United church, um, all the United church camps here in Canada. We've been doing a monthly zoom call um, just to have people, you know, be able to call it, call in and see speakers or see, right. Um, get that information. So zoom is a zoom or Skype, still, I think, I don't know about Skype, um, still work. As far as inexpensive things, um, the other thing is to find, um, to find a blog or a, an, an RSS feed, which I still use, um, to, to follow someone who isn't you, right? So it's not in your silo, right? So it's not a camp person, it's not a, um, and so if you can, that's an inexpensive way because you'll see things um, differently from a, somebody's different perspective. I know lots of people um, follow or have read Seth Godin's um, stuff on a regular basis. And um, if you can find someone who writes nice short pieces that can cause you to think almost like a daily meditation, that's great. Um, and, uh, and, and finding podcasts that also move you towards, towards being interesting is a free option as well. Um, Great. A person who writes a lot like Seth um, in similar style, similar um, themes is from Australia. Her name is Bernadette Ewa, and yep. she's got some nice pithy small things. So those are the two that I check out. In that and on movie. fundraising as well. So Nice. Good. Gab, what do you have in the, uh, the inexpensive end of, of professional development that comes to mind? Um, for me, for me, uh, journaling, I think is helpful. Um, and you don't, you don't have to be somebody that likes to write in quote unquote in a diary, but uh, setting time aside every day and it's simple to, to, to jot ideas down. And the simple question, um, that I think is, I find is really helpful is, uh, what did I do well today and how could I replicate it, um, for mm -hmm. tomorrow or again? And, uh, sometimes we, we list a lot of things that we're struggling with or having a hard time with and, reminding ourselves that we've done something well, but also 
breaking down the steps on why that went well. So if that was a, a call to a parent or a meeting that you held with uh, some of your staff members um, or just even how you managed your day, time that day, how could you reduplicate that? I find that really, uh, really helpful. And, and other things that you can, that you can do in, um, for journaling, you can ask, you know, uh, break down some of your tasks and just jot down your relationship to those tasks. So what, what does it feel like when you're, you know, doing accounting, uh, answering emails, uh, hosting a meeting, what, what is your experience to that? And I think a lot of time we have so many things that we need to check through and go through in the day. We don't even look at the relationship that we have to those tasks and, and that could lead yeah. to avoidance or um, rushing through and making mistakes or spending so much time on it. It feels like you're never going to get it done. I was talking to, I was talking to Jackie um, about accounting and, Every day she was trying to do, I think probably like 12 hours of, account. I was insane, just a ridiculous amount of hours of accounting. And every day she said, she would say, well, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. And then we, I just asked her to pause and we counted realistically how many hours um, did she have to do? And it was, a, it was a lot. So, but I said, but we can't, we have to stop saying I'm not done yet. It's, it's impossible to get done in that one day. So can we say, you know, well, I've, I've done this amount, so now I only have this amount left to do. And, and journaling just helps reflect. And as Joe mentioned, because a lot of us are by ourselves, um, sometimes we don't, have, we don't have that perspective. And when we're running camp, most of our job is helping staff gain that perspective. Most of our, the time right. our, is, is helping yeah. staff to, to see patterns. And, um, and, and, but we, how can we do that on our own? How can we? So I, journaling is helpful. I'm not somebody that writes very often, but I, I have started to make it a habit and it just helps me slow down and make smart decisions. And I actually get more work done because, because of, of doing that. And there's a whole, I mean, on, if you go online, you'll, you'll see what kind of journaling would fit with, with your style um, and what yeah. questions you find interesting that you could ask yourself. Great. All right, go Joe. Moving up a little bit in cost, um, but so conferences, um, I'm not sure what people accept as a, as a cost for a conference, but um, 500 to attend and another 500 for travel seems to be the, the, the very base of what you could get to a conference for. Um, and that's if it doesn't include a hotel, right? Like there's challenges in, in all of those things. Um, one of the things I started doing and I, um, I was blessed to have a sabbatical um, system in place through the United Church of Canada. And five years ago, six years ago, I attended, um, I traveled to Australia and did 15 different outdoor ed and summer camp sites while touring in Australia. That is not free and not cheap. But what it taught me is that I actually get a lot more out of going to a camp and talking one-on-one -on -one with a camp director than I, than I do most times going to a, to a conference. And if you're a conference attendee and have been for years, you often find that the lunchtime conversations or the breakfast conversations are more helpful to you than the sessions. And so what I did when I got back from Australia is I would take some of my education funds um, and go on camp tours. I did uh, one in Arkansas where uh, Ferncliff, um, the gills let me stay on site at Ferncliff, uh, myself and my camp director at the time. And then we toured to uh, seven different camps um, from uh, Ferncliff. So they didn't charge us to stay on site. Camp people love camp people. This is one of the things that I have found out. In, and so then um, the next year we went to North Carolina and Ruby from Camp Code um, had literally just moved into a house and uh, myself and uh, my camp director showed up on our door and Ruby had done up this great plan for us to do nine camps in five days. Um, and in Western North Carolina, that's totally doable because you, you literally can spit and hit a camp. Um, but that value of meeting one-on-one, -on -one, camp people are more than willing to give you a tour. Camp people are more than willing to, you know, to have you join in a meal if there's one happening. Um, they want to share what they're doing because they'll learn from you as well. So, so doing a, doing a solo camp tour, um, because I did see a post recently on, on group camp tours, right? Like where, and I know that Christian Camping International has done this because Australians have come here and Canadians have gone to Australia. 
the solo camp tour where you're with a very small group, two or three people, um, leaves you a lot more flexible to sort of fit in the things you need and, and see what you need as opposed to like saying, I'm coming with 20 people because a lot of people will turn away 20 people, but they won't turn away one. And this, the idea I think is sort of born out of, I'm, I don't know when Jack and Laura started their um, tour, um, but they, five years one, ago. one of the camps they came to first was Pierce Williams. So we had them here um, and toured them around Pierce Williams on their, when they left New York. We should explain that. There'll be lots of people who are new to the podcast since um, we had Jack and Laura on to talk about that. So Jack and Laura are the founders of Camp Stopping Ground. You see them putting out cool stuff all the time. Um, I often say that I would hate to be in a market with um, Camp Stopping Ground because they will outwork any camp I know. They're so passionate about what they do. But they gain their perspectives to start camps being quite young um, in their 20s to start a camp because they had been to over a hundred different summer camps and they just spent two winters between camp seasons touring camps. And so really cool perspective that they have and, and that, you know, they share that perspective at conferences, et cetera. And then they finally um, have developed their own camp that is going crazy. And they're just about to, they're starting to fundraise to buy their own property. So um, all this from starting a camp in their twenties. And it's, I can't, understate how much I think going to other camps, be it with a, as a visitor for your, for your camping association or as a, um, right? Like I can't understate how much this can change your perspective on camp and give you ideas that you simply would not have. Um, oh, sorry, Joe, you confused me. You can't overstate. Uh, you, yes. you can understate how much you can't <laughs> overstate. You want, I yes, do this. You, you are correct. And so, um, what I, I've actually created a map of all of the camps I've been to. Um, and once you start to see, like once you start to place it, and I'm showing that map online right now, but um, if you're watching, the reality is you can see, you, just your perspective is a totally different thing when you see how they do it somewhere else. Um, and sometimes it's positive, and And sometimes you leave that camp being like, well, I'm not going to do these things. Uh, um, and yeah. so uh, it's a fairly inexpensive way. And what I would say to people is it doesn't need to, I've only ever done it two times in the summer. Oftentimes it's in the spring before the camping season really starts because people aren't as busy to spend half a day with you or a couple of hours with you touring around. Great. Gab, what would you say is uh, in the what's what would you what advice would you offer for professional development that is just above the free, um, in in a little less than going to Manchester for a degree? Right. Level? <laughs> um, um, I love online courses. I I love online courses. Um, I think when you pay for something, it also makes you a little bit more accountable to yourself to do to do them. And, um, and I, I've subscribed to some online courses and I put in my, my calendar to, to keep up with, keep up with the work. So I'm subscribed to something called, and I've mentioned it on Camp Hacker before, Skillshare. And Skillshare is primarily a design um, um, online platform, but it has so many different uh, courses. So the one I'm following right now is the, uh, from the author, uh, Roxane Gay and she's talking about how to write a poignant essay and um, and just and for me how does this apply to camp it's really about storytelling and just hearing the framework that she has in telling a story and the importance of these different pieces has yes, really yes, yes, yes. cleared things up for me and, and how I maybe communicate anything from rules and regulations at camp how can I make that more interesting um, to uh, to how do we treat our campers to just, just how do you communicate and just seeing how she does what she does and, and see how she's able to understand her craft so well. I'm, I'm learning from that. So it's a, so online courses I find are really, really helpful. You can do them from home and because you're paying, I, f I feel like I'm a little bit more uh, held responsible <laughs> to attend. More and, a little more accountable. Yeah, a little bit more accountable. And I do it and I love it. And uh, it's part of, it's, it's part of my every other week 
thing and I look forward to it. So it's a, it's, it's really, really nice. If you do want to do it for free, a lot of uh, a lot of public libraries have access to some. I'm not sure Skillshare, but I know that Lynda.com, which is owned by LinkedIn, is still like. Uh, so I log into my local public library and have access to all of Linda's instructional videos. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, and Lynda.com other... is is has a lot of stuff on design as well, but so many other things about marketing and um, even creating YouTube. Ch um, videos and instructional videos which are really useful for camps uh, so lynda.com is a wonderful resource yeah uh and we should say that's l-y-n-d-a for those who don't know linda um don't know her personally or don't know the website it's lynda.com okay so i'm going to give a, a couple this is probably my last three um because there's tons we could go on forever it's obviously a topic that the three of us are very passionate about but um mine are the akimbo workshops they are um ones from seth godin we've mentioned seth now twice uh seth is a retired camp pro who at um some point um considered becoming a camp director um and seth was also live podcasting from paddling on the lake at his old camp here in Ontario um, just last week. It was awesome to see um, him out early morning just paddling and, and talking and recording his, his Akimbo podcast. So if you look for Akimbo, A-K-I-M-B-O -A uh, workshops, you can see the stuff that they offer. Um, uh, the ones I can personally recommend is the marketing seminar. It is great. It is, I don't know, probably in a three or $400 range. Um, what I like about Akimbo workshops, I think one of the challenges of online education is the accountability. And I, there's a psychological thing. And we learned this with the old version of GoCamp Pro is that people would think they've accomplished something when they've paid for it. And so like, oh yeah, I paid for it. So now I don't have to do it. And people wouldn't show back up. So people would pay for the old version of a go camp pro, they'd pay for it. And then, um, and not, not come, not do any of the exercises, not join the community, et cetera, and feel like they'd accomplish something. But then at the end of the year would have that thing is like, well, we paid for go camp pro and didn't get anything out of it. So I like a Kimball workshops because there is a community aspect to all of them. And um, there are coaches that are active. You have learning groups. Like there's a lot of accountability there that makes up for that thing that, you know, I paid for it, I've accomplished it mode. And so the, the marketing seminar is great. Bernadette who we talked about, she's got a storytelling marketing seminar coming out this fall. Um, the beta is going on right now. Um, and, um, even their bootstrappers workshop, I think would be great for people who are starting a brand new camp and, you know, doing it. Um, so those would be all under the $500 US dollar range. Um, the last thing is if you can get into the Yelp MBA and I can help you get into the Yelp MBA, they allow alumni to recommend people for the program. It is more expensive. I think it's $4,000 now. Um, and it is a, a big commitment, six weeks, 20 hours a week. Um, but it is intense. It's incredibly camp-like. The community is camp-like. That feeling at the end of it is like, holy crap, I can't believe what we accomplished in this very short period of time is there and really worth the investment. It's a huge investment for many, I understand, but um, that has paid off in spades with connections around the world. Um, a lot of camp people I know who've taken it, gone on to be coaches in Elth MBA or the other Akimba workshops. So look at Akimba workshops for some good stuff. And again, I'm happy to speak to anybody who's interested in those courses, et cetera. And, and Travis, I think um, Seth Godin also has a free podcast that's Akimbo that comes out um, fairly regularly. And yes, so if yes. you're if you're wondering if this is for you, you can, and I started listening to the podcast because of Travis. Um, um, and I, I love it. You just gain some great marketing ideas and, and just, per, uh, again, it's about perspective and that really, really helped. Um, but yeah, the Akimbo podcasts are pretty darn cool. If you're not sure, maybe check those out and then make the jump, do the leap. Excellent. Yeah. Joe, at a little higher price, I want to wrap this up pretty soon. So if you've got a couple quick ones, it'd be great. great. I'm going to burn through a whole bunch then. Um, so don't, don't set aside your, your camping conferences, be it OCA, ACA, ACQ. The ACA has regional and national conferences, so you can attend either of those. Um, there are, if you're uh, religiously based, there are things like the, um, the 
uh, all of the mainline denominations and all the evangelical denominations will have gatherings that you can attend. Um, there's a giant one in uh, North Carolina this November. Um, Think Camp uh, here at Pierce Williams is an inexpensive one because it's only uh, 150 bucks to attend. Um, but what I would encourage you to do is look at that self-development piece. So away from camping, um, be it fundraising. Um, the fundraising people had a really different way to look at the cost of a conference. If you go to that conference and it costs you $1,500 for your travel, your hotel, and your cost to be there, um, but you learn things that are going to generate $100,000 in donations, did the conference really cost you anything? And the answer is no, like that is a great return on investment. They, at the last day of that conference, they talked about this new three-day intense seminar and the cost of the seminar was $22,000. And I was like, wow. And then they broke it down saying, great, but if you raise, right, if you can, if you can raise, right, with these things, you will raise more money. That's, they all speak of it and it happens. You change one or two things in your fundraising and it happens. But also look at personal things like, um, uh, uh, personal development and uh, I'm, I'm looking into silent retreats, uh, which might be difficult for me, but I'm not <laughs> sure. I, <love> yeah, <laughs> I want. <laughs> you be invited to, Gab? <laughs> I just, yeah, I would love to go. <laughs> the idea that you take. With you. <laughs> we can talk, we can talk on the way there, but not once we're there. I think the, the idea that I, that I really want to get along to people is that you just look and find. There is something about having something outside of camping as well. So whether or not it's a conference, whether or not it's a seminar, if it's a hobby that's not camping, that's, that validate, that counts too, right? I love woodworking. So going to my garage and doing woodworking is a way to make me a better person. And, and when you come to camp, I'm surprised when I start thinking about how many things at camp, you're like, oh, I, yeah, I built that, I built that. But the reality is that's not why I do it. I do it to continue to learn something because once you stop learning, you might as well die. I'll end there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, Cap, do you have anything else on the higher end of the scale? <laughs> no, I, I like the you'll die um, piece. Um, <laughs> that is a good ending. Too, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good ending. I think just, I think there's so much about what we think internally, what we should be doing, what we should be learning, what we should. And I think just try to remove that pressure as much as possible. Try to trust yourself in what you're interested in. And, and if things seem too big of a chunk or too much of a time, just try to take a pause and see, can you do something a little bit at a smaller scale or um, can you re, you know, re-budget, reschedule so that as Joe mentioned in the long run, uh, the payoff is so much bigger and uh, not, not just not to be afraid to reach out to a friend and go out for dinner or yes. drinks and have that first conversation and, and build from there because we started doing this podcast so many, I don't know how many years ago, but just the fact that we, we met uh, reg regularly-ish yes. uh, yeah. throughout the year has helped me so much. And just starting uh, will make a big difference. It'll make you feel better too. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you both. And that brings us to our tool of the week. So welcome to the Tool of the Week section. It is sponsored by my personal Tool of the Week newsletter. If you're interested in joining, I send out stuff at 6.05 every Tuesday morning uh, at 6.05 Eastern. You can join by going to gocamp.pro slash T-O-W and uh, there'll be a little form you can do. So I am sponsoring my favorite section of our podcast. Uh, I'm going to start us off today. I don't have a physical copy of this. this is something I've been reading on my Kindle, but uh, Pat Flynn's new book called Superfans. Um, Pat writes books that are pretty easy to understand. Lots of implementation, lots of exercises, really good page uh, on his website with all these extra things you can do that aren't, um, he didn't have room to include in the book or links to stories that he tells. Uh, and it is a great book. I, Pat's podcast um, 
called Smart Passive Income is one of those podcasts that I cannot listen to because it's too too good. Um, it's the one I can't take with me. Um, so I've had to stop listening just because I find it gives me more stress because there's so many good ideas. I'm like, how do I implement that? So nice to have it in book form. I can read it when I want. I can make some notes because um, it's a Kindle. I can save it to an old tool of the week called Readwise. Um, it looks at my um, Kindle notes that I've taken and it sends them to me in an email every morning. So it mixes them up. So my pick is Pat Flynn's Superfans. And if you go to camphacker.tv slash podcast, you will see the links in the show notes to this, which is episode 114. Um, you'll see uh, the show notes there where Matt will put in the links to all of our tools. Um, Joe, what's your tool? Um, my tool of the week this week is something called uh, Photo on your computer. It shows up as Photo Resize. It is one of those things, and for years, Travis has always been um, very much so the idea that do you, something you use that you don't recognize you use, right, is the, is the essence of a tool of the week. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and so the free batch photo resizer, we have been using this for, I, I would think, almost 10 years. I know that, well, this is 2011 it was released, so... Um, I know that there's Photoshop and other things to resize, but if you have a folder of 200 photos and you just all need them to be uh, 400, um, 400 pixels on, on one side as the biggest side, you literally just rename photo resize the, you rename it in your, on your desktop and then you drag the folder over to it and it takes about two minutes, you're done. It's brilliant. It is something we use so that we can take all of the great photos we get from our photographers um, and we can resize them um, to fit things like our, our website or promotions because rarely do I need a 22 megabyte picture. Um, <laughs> rarely, rarely am I putting uh, something up on the side of billboards the up. Yeah. Even 22 megabytes is too big for billboards, right? Like it's, you, you got to go like the side of the sky dome. Um, and so this, this little tool, it's recently I got a new, a new hard drive and so a new computer. And so it comes to what do you reload on your computer first? And one of the first things is I need to put, um, I still use Corel draw. So I loaded that Gabs. I know you'll be proud of me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, oh. and then photo resize, uh, is right there beside it. So, yeah. Thanks Joe. Gab, how about you? Uh, mine's a, uh, well, it's a standing desk. I've included two links, a do-it-yourself standing desk, sort of a, uh, an Ikea hack on how you can use some Ikea furniture to just add to your desk. Um, it is not pretty. I won't lie. I looked at it and it doesn't look good. But if you're looking for a cheap solution and you want to upgrade your office and if you have more people in your office, that might be something that you're interested in. We're building our own um, standing desk. And I also included a link of the top five standing desks of 2019 and there's some really cool stuff and not too expensive but you know during the summer a lot of us are up and about running around um, and it's wonderful and it's lovely and then the rest of the year most of our work is done from a desk and so if you can have an adjustable desk where you can stand um, I know I think a lot better of course it's better for your health but just creativity wise and getting stuff done standings helpful uh, so yeah Standing desks, tool of the week. I'm standing at a desk right now. Same these. <laughs> <laughs> and mine makes mine is standable, so yeah. I think it's something we all buy into. Yeah. Thanks, Gab. Reference, um, Gab. Just to add to Gab's, I yeah. uh, Home Depot sells height adjustable work tables. Yep. That crank up and down, and they're really they're not inexpensive, but uh, for what you get, you right if if you're looking for a standing table to meet around it's all cool yeah there's exact. i think i yeah i think some people are happy with their desks and the and so then they don't want to get an entire new desk so if you get the tabletop where you can adjust it up and down or just keep it as is but it's definitely the way of offices are going anyways and if you are responsible for other people within your office maybe start looking at updating your desks and again if it's financially not feasible maybe there's a, a project that you can do as a team team building exercise where y'all get standing desks. Excellent. Uh, Gab, if people have follow-up questions, where can they get a hold of you? 
They can um, follow me on Instagram at Gabrielle Rail with two L's, uh, DM me there, or you can check out where I work at waro.com, O-U-A-R-E-A-U. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, Joe, how can people follow up with you if they have any questions? If they have any questions, they can always reach me through uh, my camp website, which is campisbetter.com, or through my camp thoughts website, which is yoyojo, Y-O-Y-O-J-O-E.com. And you can link from uh, my site to online social media things. Excellent. Right on. Thank you both for being here. Um, grateful to have this conversation with you. Sorry we missed Dan. Um, he's doing some important camp work this morning and wasn't able to join us. Uh, so thank you all for watching us, for listening to this show. Uh, it's great to have a, a community built around the podcast and we're looking forward to this year very much. If you have suggestions for the show or you would like to, um, like to be on the show or, or suggest speakers or topics, whatever it is, you can email me, Travis at gocamp.pro. And uh, also any feedback, happy to take it there. The final thing, again, we'd love it if you gave us a review, just open up the reviews tab um, on your podcast app or go to camphacker.tv slash iTunes and leave a review there. Those, again, help more camp pros find the show. So we want to thank everybody for being a part of this good community. We want to thank Matt, who's our executive producer and editor for all the work that he does and putting our show notes together. So you want to find out about um, the photo resizer that Joe's talking about and want to know exactly which one, you can go to camphacker.tv slash podcast, and there you will get uh, the show notes. So this, again, is episode 114, and uh, we're grateful to have you all here. Thanks for the evening, friends. Good stuff. Awesome. Yeah.